Hello, VC, the waxed here. Last weekend, November 10th, Friday, there was the Hollywood uh, record show. First time I went to it. And uh, my, um, my expectations, um, they weren't low based on all the shows I've been to in and around Los Angeles. But I was pleasantly surprised. It was good. It was over at the Marriott Convention Center across from the Burbank Airport in a ballroom there. Um, pretty well attended. Uh, a nice amount of dealers carrying um, a nice uh, diverse amount of uh, genres. And, uh, I, you know, I left there without, you know, going broke, but I picked up a lot of good records. Um, I met uh, a couple of uh, buddies there, new buddies. But uh, John Marino, shout out to him. Um, he was there. And um, Jim Kaplan, uh, you know, publisher of Record Collector News. He, um, him and I had lunch and we went over to Atomic Records. Let me just show you uh, some records I picked up there before the show. to kind of warm my taste buds. You know, I'm king of the twofers. So I found an Art Blakey twofer, Thermo, which is, um, it, I believe it has one record and then a comp of two other records. This thing was minty. Even the cover's in decent shape. I mean, except for that ring layerish thing. But the inside's beautiful. And this was um, a combination of... Um, I can't even pronounce that word. The record is Ungatu. Someone's going to kill me. It's a live record from Recorded at Birdland. That is the one record. And then on the second record, it's a combination of uh, Caravan... In thermo so but it is you know these again i'll keep saying it this is a milestone too for this thing is mint it was 20 bucks um sounds beautiful sounds gorgeous i'm very happy so i didn't i didn't have any of those records his you know the riverside recordings but i'm very happy to get this and then there was a um i think this is either a late 70s early 80s Columbia Repress, a lot of them look like this, of uh, Hard Bop, which I know um, Impex has reissued it in a very audiophile way, but this sounds great. Um, it's not the original artwork, but for $8, mint condition, happy. And then the pick was, I, can't, I already have this, but this, the best of Ferris Sanders, uh, for 20 bucks in mint condition, in addition to being a white label promo. Look how, I'll tell you one thing. I've seen white label promos, but I think this Impulse white label promo is gorgeous. To me, that's one of the best looking white label promos. So uh, I'll find a new home for my OG, but uh, you know, this was $20, but I had another $9.99 sticker on there. I don't think you would have taken that one, but uh, what do you know? I don't change stickers. So I picked those three up at Atomic. Very happy. All right. So I went to the show. And like I say, I was pleasantly surprised. When you walked in, uh, everyone was handed a bag. A Freak Beat record bag. Freak Beat. I love Freak Beat. It's a small record store. But I always seem to go in there and find stuff every time. Yeah, who leaves a record store empty-handed? But uh, good stuff. Good quality stuff. And they put records for everyone in the bag. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a lot of people got this record. Harry Belafonte. Um, by the way, pretty mint. And the, uh, I, I don't know if a truck broke down full of Harry Belafonte records in front of the show. But um, at least this has Matilda on it, you know, if you're a big fan of Beetlejuice. So, um, you know, and I love, talk about labels. That one's killer. But this thing is mint. So I have Matilda now. I'm happy. All right. Um, in front, Freak Beat was set up. And they have boxes of $5 records. And not crap. Um, I, I, that's where I bought the most from. Uh, soundtrack of Local Hero. Still in the shrink. Um, I know that MoFi just uh, either put it out or repressed it or whatever. But this is minty fresh. Got the hype sticker on it and everything. And um, it's a great movie. And, and I love these Warner Brothers, uh, you know, these OG plastic sleeves. Nice. So 
That was a good one. I'm a big, huge fan. Um, you know, not huge into vocal jazz, but I'm a big fan of Bob Durrell. Um, I show his records a lot. Whenever I find one and pick it up, you know, his stuff is not expensive. But if you're someone of my age and you uh, grew up watching Saturday morning cartoons, Schoolhouse Rock, Bob Durrell sang a lot of the songs, and I know he wrote a bunch of them, but this is him and uh, Bill Takis. And there's uh, Bob, that's Bob, and that's Bill. Um, this was five bucks all day long on this red label. I think red's like a Italian or Spanish label. I have a few red ones, Italy, Italian. There you go, no one has to correct me, no one. But when you can go try Bob Rero out, at least stream him. You, his records are not expensive. Okay. Uh, I'm not in big into, but I, uh, our Tatum, but, uh, this is a Verve, um, there he is, the essential our Tatum, five bucks on, Let's pull this out, there you go, there's the Verve, and again, this is beautiful looking, I mean, the cover's nothing to write home about, but, uh, nice, so, Really looking forward to listening to all these. I have not listened to all of them. Can't go wrong with picking up a Pablo, live Pablo album. This is a Dizzy Gillespie's Big Seven at Montreux, 75. You got Milt Jackson, Johnny Griffin, Lockjaw Davis, Tommy Flanagan, Niels Peterson, Peterson, and uh, Mickey Rorker. And uh, look at that. Uh, it's these uh, promos in Boston to the thing into the cover the thing but again this five dollars all day minty fresh okay this is um vg ish but hey for five bucks the beatles rock and roll music uh, you know rough cover let's see on the kind of um unique thing but this doesn't look horrible for five dollars no uh gotta get me some uh sunny stit this is sunny stit twofer there he is young man this is some older stuff who's on here i just shut the camera i'm sorry guys um you got gene ammons art blakey kenny drew jj johnson duke jordan john lewis junior mens bud powell max roach killer Killer, killer, killer. This is some older stuff. I think it's a uh, bunch of stuff from 49 through the 50s up until 51. So younger um, Sunny Stip, but again, vinyl's nice. Some Sometimes these green label pr uh, prestiges, if they're early enough, uh, Rudy Van Gelder did them, but he is not in the dead box. But Genesis... Five bucks for a twofer all day long, all day long. Another Art Tatum. This is with uh, Lionel Hampton, Harry Edison, Buddy Rich, Red Colander, and Barney Castle. Um, this is from a session in 1955. So can't go wrong with these Pablos. I think, you know, it says from the Art Tatum um, masterpieces. I know there's a Pablo box of our Tatum, and I believe this is, um, I don't believe, since it says this, it's one of the, this that they released them separately, I'm guessing. Another good one is um, Lenny uh, Tristano, New York Impressions. He's kind of a, I don't even know if he was an ever, be, ever was jazz pianist. I think he was more on the avant-garde, um, you know, this is a 1983 posthumous, I believe, Electra musician promo. Um, I have a bunch of his stuff. He's very unique. I would say along the lines of a uh, uh, monk, you know, in my mind. If you ever find one, they don't go for a lot. I suggest picking up or at least streaming and listening to him because he is quite good. Here he's with uh, Peter Ind. And Tom Wayburn. And these um, 
sessions. It doesn't say in the liner notes when these sessions were done. But um, there you go. Nice original liner. Okay. Not all jazz. Not all jazz. I For five bucks, you can't go wrong with picking up uh, Boys and Girls, Brian Ferry. This is an awesome album. Original inner, and I believe this thing is just like, you could eat off of this. And it's, I believe this, it's got a Robert Ludwig master job. This is an album, I believe an album everyone should have. I already have it, but this is actually better than the copy I have. So it's replacing it. So all those were five bucks. Here are the two splurges, and not by any stretch of the imagination were they splurges. Here's a uh, best of John Cold trade on Pablo. So I, I uh, and it's still in the shrink, by the way. Still in the shrink. Um, I believe all the Cold Train stuff they released were live recordings. So there's just a, you know, best of the live recordings they had. And um, nice. Uh, I have the. Afro Blue Impressions, I think it is. I don't have it in front of me, so someone will correct me if I'm wrong. That double, That's a double live album, and it's quite good. The recording, I think, is quite good. So nice to pick this up. It, this was 10 bucks. And then last but not least, this replaces a beat-up copy I have. Um, I spent money on this, and when I say I spent money, I paid 25 bucks. Uh, it's uh, Herbie Hancock, Speak Like a Child. This is a 85 DMM, which that's what it's replacing for me. So mine's kind of scuffed up. This is in much better shape. I think it, all, it only has one mark on it that makes slight noise. But great album. Like it a lot. There you go. Blue note. So, um, you know, I didn't go off. I, there was a lot to look at, you know, ba based on me buying those other albums at uh, Atomic earlier in the day. Um, I think I did pretty well on uh, Friday. So, um, you know, I'll ha have footage on the on the, this video of me wandering around the show. So uh, if you like what you see, leave a comment. If you want to add something to what I said, leave a comment, please. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. Hit the like button. And until next time, later.